and I remember every one of them. The longer you live, the easier it is to accept death. Who is not going to leave this world? Aren't we all? Anything happened, I can guarantee I'd do it again, and sooner or later I would kill another child. About 29 years. Well, death is death. I said one time, he said, that's a horrible way of dying. I said, what is a good way? We're going to have to cut this interview, Nick. I'm not going to go into any more detail. I got a big finger in all your faces, thanks a lot. You're inhuman, you're an inhumane bunch of fucking living bastards and bitches. Because I will kill again. No, I would do it again. I've been molesting kids nonstop since I was 13 years old, over half my life. I've done it before, and at the time, I liked it. I'm leaving, I'm glad. Thanks a lot, society, for railroading my ass. Okay, let's go. Number six, Wesley Allen Dodd. On November 13, 1989, 28-year-old Wesley Allen Dodd was arrested for trying to kidnap a young boy from a movie theater in Camas, Washington. However, when police brought him in for questioning, they discovered something far more sinister. Dodd had physically hurt and slayed three other boys in recent months. In fact, Dodd had physically exploited dozens of children over the course of 15 years, beginning when he was just 13 years old. He told the police everything, and even more grisly details came to light when investigators discovered Dodd's diary. Inside, he'd written about his plans to kidnap and physically harm children, as well as descriptions of the slayings he'd committed. Due to his confessions and the overwhelming amount of evidence discovered in his apartment, Wesley Allen Dodd was charged with three counts of first-degree offense and the attempted kidnapping of the boy in the movie theater. He pleaded guilty to all charges and asked to be executed. Dodd was executed by hanging on January 5, 1993, in the first legal hanging in nearly 30 years. Uniquely, Dodd refused to appeal his case or sentence and specifically requested that he be executed by hanging because, he said, if he ever got out of prison, he would assassinate again and would enjoy every minute of it. His last words were, I was once asked by somebody, I don't remember who, if there was any way physical offenders could be stopped. I said no. I was wrong. I said there was no hope, no peace. There is peace. There is hope. I found both in the Lord Jesus Christ. This is his horrific story. I will kill again. No, I would do it again. I've been molesting kids nonstop since I was 13 years old, over half my life. I've done it before, and at the time, I liked it. Number five, Timothy McVeigh. Timothy McVeigh, a former U.S. Army soldier, was convicted on 15 counts of slaying and conspiracy for his role in the 1995 terroristic bombing of the Alfred P. Murrah Federal Building in Oklahoma City. On April 19, 1995, just after 9 a.m., a massive truck bomb exploded outside of Alfred P. Murrah Federal Building. The blast collapsed the north face of the nine-story building, instantly taking lives of more than 100 people and trapping dozens more in the rubble. Emergency crews raced to Oklahoma City from across the country, and when the rescue effort finally ended two weeks later, 168 people had lost their lives, including 19 young children who were in the building's daycare center at the time of the blast. On April 21, the massive manhunt for suspects in the worst terrorist outbreak ever committed on U.S. soil resulted in the capture of Timothy McVeigh, a 27-year-old former U.S. Army soldier who matched an eyewitness description of a man seen at the scene of the crime. On the same day, Terry Nichols, an associate of McVeigh's, surrendered at Harrington, Kansas, after learning that the police were looking for him. Both men were found to be members of a radical right-wing survivalist group based in Michigan, and on August 8, John Fortier, who knew of McVeigh's plan to bomb the federal building, agreed to testify against McVeigh and Nichols in exchange for a reduced sentence. Two days later, a grand jury indicted McVeigh and Nichols on slaying and conspiracy charges. On June 2, 1997, McVeigh was convicted on 15 counts of slaying and conspiracy, and on August 14, under the unanimous recommendation of the jury, he was sentenced to be executed by lethal injection. In December 2000, McVeigh asked a federal judge to stop all appeals of his convictions and to set a date for his execution by lethal injection. McVeigh's execution in June 2001 was the first federal capital punishment to be carried out since 1963. Timothy McVeigh chose to remain silent the entire time the lethal injection took place. He did, however, leave a note behind in place of his valid final words, quoting the last few lines of the poem Invictus by Sir William Ernest Henley. I am the master of my fate, I am the captain of my soul. Number four, Robert Austin Sullivan. Robert Austin Sullivan was executed on the April 8, 1973 for slaying of Donald Schmidt, an assistant manager at a Howard Johnson restaurant in Homestead, where Sullivan had worked. 
Sullivan, the adopted son of a Harvard-educated doctor, and his boyfriend, Reed McLaughlin, abducted Schmidt, taped his wrists behind his back, and drove him to a swampy area, where they shot him twice in the head with a double-barrel shotgun. When arrested, Sullivan had a shotgun, a handgun, white adhesive tape, and Schmidt's credit cards. Sullivan confessed to the slaying and implicated McLaughlin. McLaughlin also confessed, but entered into a plea bargain with the state and received a life sentence for his testimony at Sullivan's trial. Sullivan was convicted in November 1973, and the jury recommended a life sentence. The trial judge imposed the capital punishment. He was the second person to be executed in Florida after capital punishment was reinstated in 1976. At the time of his execution on November 30, 1983, Robert Sullivan had been on condemned row longer than anyone in the U.S. for more than 10 years. His execution generated attention when Pope John Paul II personally pleaded for clemency to spare Sullivan's life. However, Governor Bob Graham refused the appeal. Sullivan maintained his innocence till the end. On November 30, 1983, Sullivan was executed in the electric chair at Florida State Prison at the age of 36. His last meal consisted of steak, french fries, milk, and fresh strawberries. His last words, in spite of what is about to happen, do not quit. I hold no malice to none. May God bless us all. Number 3. Billy Wayne Coble Billy Wayne Coble, distraught over his pending divorce, kidnapped his wife, Karen Visha. He was arrested and later freed on bond. Nine days after the kidnapping, Coble went to Karen Visha's home, where he handcuffed and tied up her three daughters and J.R. Visha. He then went to the homes of Robert and Zelda Visha, 64 and 60 respectively, and Bobby Visha, 39, who lived nearby, and fatally shot them. After Karen Visha returned home, Coble abducted her and drove off, hurting her and threatening to physically harm and slay her. He was arrested after wrecking in neighboring Boss County following a police chase. Coble was convicted of capital slaying in 1990. In 2007, the 5th U.S. Circuit Court of Appeals ordered a new trial on punishment. On retrial in 2008, a second jury sentenced him to capital punishment. Crawford Long, the former first assistant district attorney in McLennan County, who helped retry Coble in 2008, said his heart full of scorpions description of Coble was fitting. Billy Wayne Coble received lethal injection at the state penitentiary. He was the oldest inmate executed by Texas since the state resumed carrying out capital punishment in 1982. Asked to make a final statement, Coble replied, that'll be five dollars. He told the five witnesses he selected to be in attendance that he loved them, then again said, that'll be five dollars. I have known probably about 400 people that's been executed in about 29 years. Well, death is death. I said one time, he said, that's a horrible way of dying. I said, what is a good way? Desire to give it any thought. And I remember every one of them. The longer you live, the easier it is to accept death. Who is not going to leave this world? Aren't we all? How can you say something if you wasn't there? I accepted I did the murder, yes. Coble nodded to the witnesses and added, take care. Number two, Ted Bundy. Ted Bundy had a difficult childhood. He had a strained relationship with his stepfather, and his shyness made him a frequent target of bullying. Later, however, his intelligence and social skills enabled him to enjoy a successful college career, and he developed a series of apparently normal emotional relationships with women. Despite this apparent stability, he physically harmed and slayed several young women in Washington, Oregon, Colorado, Utah, and Florida between 1974 and 1978. Although he ultimately confessed to 28 assassinations, some estimated that he was responsible for hundreds more. Following a well-publicized trial, he was sentenced to be executed in 1979 for the slaying of two college students. In the following year, he again was sentenced, this time for physically hurting and slaying a 12-year-old girl. Despite the appalling nature of his crimes, Bundy became something of a celebrity, particularly following his escape from custody in Colorado in 1977. During his trial, his charm and intelligence drew significant public attention. His case inspired a series of popular novels and films devoted to serial slaughterer. It also galvanized feminist criminologists who contended that the popular media had transformed Bundy into a romantic figure. Bundy was finally executed in Florida's electric chair in 1989. I think society deserves to be protected from me and from others like me, that's for sure. Certainly the, the most extreme punishment society has, and I deserve each time I'd harm someone, each time an uh, enormous amount of, of, of horror, guilt, remorse afterward. His last words, I'd like you to give my love to my family and friends.
Number one, Eileen Wernos. From late 1989 through late 1990, the bodies of seven middle-aged white men were discovered in central Florida. The assailant had robbed all of the victims before shooting them and stealing their cars. The assailant was Eileen Wernos. Wernos had a deeply troubled childhood. Her parents separated before her birth and her father later spent time in mental hospitals for child hurt. When Wernos was four years old, she and her brother were sent to live with her grandparents. In her early teens, she spent time at a home for unwed mothers and then dropped out of school and turned to selling her body. Arrested in early 1991, she admitted to the slayings but claimed that she acted in self-defense after the men hurt her. Supporters of Wernos viewed her as a strong independent woman and even as a heroic figure for defending herself against male aggression. And let me kill the rest of those guys to turn me into a serial killer. I know they did. The cops knew who I was after Richard Mallory died. I left prints everywhere and they covered it because I was no professional serial killer or anything. And they were using sonic pressure on my head since 1997. Every time I started writing something, it went up higher. So I'm thinking that probably had the TV rigged. They had the intercom on in the room and they kept lying that it wasn't on. Sonic pressure. And person. every time I was trying to write something, I, they, and I, I think they had some kind of eye in the cell. In 1992, she was convicted of one of the slayings and given capital punishment. She later pleaded guilty to three more of the assassinations and admitted that she had slayed for profit and not in self-defense. On October 9, 2022, Eileen Wernos was executed by lethal injection. In her last statement, her final words were that, I'd just like to say I'm sailing with the rock and I'll be back, like Independence Day with Jesus, June 6th. Like the movie, Big Mothership and all, I'll be back. Then I move on, recolonize to another planet or whatever, but I know it's gonna be good because I didn't do anything as wrong as they said. I did the right thing. That's all for today, folks. See you next time.